Come and see some great independent movies at the Boston International Film Festival at the AMC Lowe's Theater, Boston Common. Again, the film event of the year is coming up fast. So get your all-access VIP tickets today. WB7P, your boy Mad Mike in the AM. Let's give it up for that jab stab. Welcome to Foundations TV, everybody. Our guest today is Mr. Patrick Jerome, who has produced many music videos as well as independent films. And he just wrapped up the 12th International Boston Film Festival, who, uh, for which he's a founder, actually. Yes. Founder and director. And the executive director, of Excellent, course. excellent. So mm. we're super, super excited to have you at the studio today. Thank well, you. Well, thanks for having me at the studio. And, you know, it's, 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 it's such a pleasure to be here with you, Gorek. Yes, yes. Same mm -hmm. here. So let's start with the obvious question. Um, what, got <laughs> you, <laughs> what got you into filmmaking? Well, filmmaking uh, had been my passion. Um, the first time I went to a movie theater, I was 12 years old. Okay. And I said, um, a week later, this is what I want to do. I want to make really? films. Really? Yeah. I wow. had, uh, it was a very traumatic uh, experience because um, I went to see a karate film uh -huh. that was very violent. Uh -huh. And I was so shocked and to see, you know, this kind of world, you know, on the screen. To me, it was so real. Yeah. And um, I felt really traumatized by the experience. And I was telling a friend of mine about it later. And then he was telling me not all films are like that. So he convinced me to go back to the movie theater and then see, you know, some older films. And then um, I went and I see that film with Clint Eastwood with that little monkey. Yeah. And, then I, and I was like, and I saw how different it was, yeah. you know, from this karate, you know, very violent film. Right. And then um, it's, and my interest started to grow. And then I said, this is what I want to do. I want to make film. Wow. So that young, you had already made up your mind? Yes. Actually, I had no idea what I would be ended up doing. I didn't know, you know, what even the position would be. Uh -huh. I was just fascinated by what I experienced, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, in a dark room on a big screen. And I right. said, this is what I want to do. And later on in life, I ended up writing and I ended up being a director, a producer, and also an editor. So did you take formal training for all this? Um, not really. In Haiti, to start with, um, I went and take a video class, and then when I come here to the U.S., I took, you know, some film classes. Okay. But after, I mean, in Haiti, I made two films before I came here to this country. Wonderful. So I would say I learned from life. So is that what brought you to the U.S., the filmmaking yes, itself? Yes, yes, yes. I made a movie in Haiti, Woodless Gang, um, about uh, some gangsters that we call Zenglendo in Haiti. Okay. And um, so the movie, you know, was kind of controversial for the 
uh, establishment for the you know political system. So I had to leave the country with political asylum. Okay. Uh, to come to the U.S. Okay. And then, uh, so that's kind of changed my life in a way. Yeah, uh, I'm Coming sure. here I'm and then, sure. you know, to face new challenges and stuff. And right, right. So I get back to the movie business uh, here in the U.S. and I've been doing it since. Yeah. So wh when was the first movie? Which, uh, how old were you when you made the first movie? <laughs> <laughs> my first movie, my first feature film, I yeah. would say. My first feature film, Woodless Gang, uh, in Asian queer, we call it Réseau Sans Pitié. Uh -huh. uh, but Woodless Gang is my, my first feature film. But before that, I made a film named Complex, uh, 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 Compressed Pour Complex. Uh, so that was my first feature I mean, film. I mean, it wasn't a feature film. It was maybe 45 minutes long. And then um, after that, I made my first feature film back in 1990, 1991. So 1991, we're talking wow. about about 24 years ago. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 1991 doesn't feel like 24 years <laughs> ago, right? And time flies. Wow, wow. So speaking of challenges, I mean, could you tell us something about the challenges you faced when you came to the U.S.? Well, when I came to the U.S., of course, you have to work to make a living. You can't yeah. really come here and go straight to filmmaking. Right. So um, coming here and, um, you know, I, I came with my daughter and, and, and her mom at the time and we were new to the country. So, you know, um, I had to do some other jobs, um, you know, to, to, to get back on my feet. I mean, to get on my feet here in the U.S. And then, uh, you know, I, I worked for the International Rescue Committee and then the American Red Cross. I did social worker. I was lucky to get social worker jobs. Uh, when I came here, and then I did that, and then um, after that I get back, you know, to my, you know, field. Uh, but it had always been, you know, in my life somehow, you know, it was a hobby at some point, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then I managed to turn things around and, and started doing it professionally. Since 1998, 1999, I made my first feature film here in the U.S. called Deportation. Mm. And then, um, so, I mean, those, I mean, that was one of the challenges that I faced. Uh, that was very harsh, you know, yeah, uh, to I'm face sure. the reality of exactly. life. Yeah. And then, um, you know, to do whatever you have to do to survive. Right. Right. And then to, you know, find a way to get back to your field. To your passion. To my passion. To so that's one of the challenges that I faced. But once I started to those movies, right. now I face different type of challenges. Right. You know, like dealing what? with people. Mm. Uh, you know, finding the money, the budget to make yes. a film. So that's, yes. that's very tough. Yes. Um, you know, and then, you know, I realized that, you know, you can, uh, you need to be very talented to make it, and then you need to have everything in the U.S. to make it, you know, a little bit of diplomacy, talent, yeah. luck, it's yeah. a mixture of everything. Yeah, you learn as you go, huh? Yes, you learn as you go, that's for sure. Yeah, so you've produced about 18 films, is that right? Yes, yes, oh, wow. about 18 So films. are they, are these 18 films on different subjects, on a variety of subjects, or do you feel that there, there are a certain type that you that are close to your heart and you like to work on a certain subject? Um, I would say, you know, all those films are, are fictional. They are fiction. Okay. Uh, they are either inspired by true story or based on the true story. Okay. Uh, I mean, some, some movies I would just say, you know what, I would like to make a horror film. I just go and make a horror film. So you have like, made like, horror films? Yes, oh. like, like Open <laughs> Vacancy. Okay. So that, that didn't really have much, you know, a uh, 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 true story, you know, behind it. Mm -hmm. But that was, but most of my films, it's, 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 like I said, it's either inspired by true events or based on true events. Mm. Uh, for example, the first feature film that I made here, Deportation, um, it's from my experience working sure. with the Red Cross and dealing with, you know, some of the uh, caseworkers that was uh, working with, uh, people who are facing deportation mm -hmm. and I came across many deportation stories mm -hmm. and then that kind of inspired me to write a story about you know uh, one of the you know stories that I went through I mean that I heard people went through mm -hmm. uh, 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 to, to, to make a movie about it so that was it and my movie Haul at Me for example it's a story about a hitman hunted by his conscience um, it's from a movie that I shot uh, 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 with, for a friend. I, I filmed a movie for him. I was the director of photography. Mm -hmm. And while it was time for us to do the editing, uh, there was a kid that was on the set with us that ended up getting shot and they killed him. 
And I was like, wow, you know, somebody got killed him and that person is out there and we don't know what happened. Yeah. So, you know, and then, you know, I was asking myself, you know, do those killers have a conscience? Mm. So basically the story was before a gangster hunted by his conscience. And then, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, uh, his, his cinematic value, I ended up changing it to a hitman hunted by his conscience. Mm. So that's kind of the source of inspiration. Mm -hmm. But most of my movies, like I said, is from life experience I got inspired in. Yeah, it looks like you've that. had some intense experiences and they have influenced uh, your filmmaking. <laughs> well, life itself yeah. uh, has so many intense moments. Yeah. Whether, you know, it's war going on in the world, whether right. it's natural disaster, right. you know, whether it's, you know, people struggling in some parts of the, of the world fighting for liberty or freedom. Uh, life itself is very intense, so yeah. it's a huge pool of uh, 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 stories mm -hmm. uh, that are going on in reality that you can, you know, get inspired from right, uh, right. Uh, uh, to produce film. That's that's just amazing. You write and you uh, direct a movie, you produce it, and then you edit it. So I'm sure that's a project that's so close to your heart and. Um, probably mm. reflects a little bit of you in every project as well, yes, right? <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, uh, especially when you, when I when I write in English, yeah. and English is not my first language, yeah. and then uh, you can you know some people can feel yeah. my personality uh, throughout the script, throughout I'm the sure, story. Yeah, you know? yeah, that has to happen. Uh, <laughs> that's a natural <laughs> process. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Anything that's so close to. And you that's always amazing to me how people can point things out, really? people who know me, you know. Yeah. They can I do the correlation yes, and talk yes. about it as well. Yes. Oh, wow. So it is it is interesting. The third eye looking at you and the picture of the project. Yes, yes. Really Even though I mean when you write a script, you make a movie, yeah. just take a life on its own based on the characters uh, yeah. and the story and how the chemistry work and all of that. Yeah. So. so do you like people editing your work? Do you open your work up for editing or <laughs> not yet? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, it, it seems to me I feel more comfortable doing the editing of my own my work own. because okay. the people that I would trust to do the editing of my film, I, I, I don't have the money to pay them. So I, okay. would, <laughs> <laughs> I would feel comfortable doing it myself and sure. achieve the same thing I think they would you know, achieve. Yeah. So uh, uh, speaking of uh, larger projects, uh, Boston International Film Festival. When was that conceived? <laughs> how did that you? How did you come up with that? And when was that? Boston International Film Festival started. Uh, we had the first edition in 2003, but the first, you know, we started the festival in 2002, uh -huh. planning it. Uh -huh. And uh, it was after my movie Hall at Me, and uh, which we had half a million dollar budget for it, and then we went on uh, uh, produce a great film and we were wondering how we're going to present that movie in Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, before that, with my movie Deportation, I went across the U.S. in many international film festivals. Oh, okay. So okay. I didn't kind of see that kind of experience going on in mm -hmm. Boston. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, you know, there was a need for it. Great. So I, I talked to the crew that were working on the film and we talked about it and we wanted to start a small film festival. Yeah. And then the ID came and says, why don't we try to do a Boston International Film Festival? Go. Because I, I was having, I had uh, a TV show at that time called International Rhythms. Okay. Uh, that was on TV and says Boston International Film Festival would make perfect sense to do that. So that's how the story started. We ended up going to the uh, mayor's office in downtown Boston and oh, then I'm to sure the governor's office. Yeah. Do a lot of legwork and then we find oh, out yeah. how to do it and we find out it was possible and they were excited to get behind it and then we get it started and then that's how it's been going on since. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, we were fortunate enough that Menino was in office uh, when we started the festival that give us, you know, that kind of a uh, 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 opportunity and you know that we needed yeah. uh, to uh, to have somebody like that who was very supportive and and really get, you know get behind it right. and had no problem with it so that's kind of helped a lot great so in the last 12 years uh, I'm sure you've seen growth of the festival so can you give us an idea of the scale of where it started and where is it today well the festival uh, uh, because it's been going on for so long yeah. it's just um, it's amazing watching life going on, uh, you know, even with the technology. Mm -hmm. Like when we just started the festival, we were getting submission on VHS tape. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, oh my God, yeah, the tape. it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that Fast was forward the tape, ago, they play yes. the tape and oh, blah, 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 and then all over the sudden you have, you know, the DVDs started coming and then the, the tapes are dying out, yeah, you know. You get fun. less and less and less tape until you get no tape no at tape all. No tape at all now, <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's so now you get file, you had MOV yeah. file, you yeah. get Blu-ray submitted to you. So it is amazing. It's yeah. such, it's such um you know, a, 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 a wonderful uh, experience to be a part of, especially when we started the festival, there was no YouTube, there was no yeah. Facebook, yeah. you know, there was nothing like that. And then right, right. it was a different world. I'm and sure, and yeah, as, it's as, so as it's going on, you know, you can visibly see the changes yeah. uh, uh, throughout everything. The way people make movies now, the the the, the equipments that are available right. to independent filmmakers, right. uh, the network that are available for them to do promotions. Right. Uh, it's just it's just amazing. So through those twelve years, we experienced a lot. I yeah. mean, it's it's and then in, in a very very positive way. Right, um, right. to see how life going on, you know. It's just that, um, you know, sometimes I felt like it kept more people together, yeah. um, you know, with the older technologies, with the newer technologies, people are more uh, by themselves in a way, yeah. um, you know, which is kind of, you know, kinda, you know, sad sometimes to see. But at the same time, there are ways you can take advantage of the technology mm. um, because so many people feel more comfortable sitting at home now to watch a movie yeah. because of those big flat screen TV yeah. which didn't exist when we started yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> when we started those, the, yeah. <laughs> exactly. the festival so now you have all those online streaming videos where right. people don't even need to leave their house anymore to go to the movie right. theaters right. so we are kind of facing that experience now and everybody's trying to figure out okay what to do you know to keep the audience, you know, uh, 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 um, interested, right, so they right, can right. get, you know, to give them motivated to come and attend uh, an the event festival, where yeah. they can meet other people, yes. where filmmakers have their product, they come to Boston to present it, where they can, you know, um, you know, have an intimate session with the uh, audience, you know, for question and answers oh, and, and, yeah. and get feedback about their own, you know, uh, uh, artistic products. So great, it's it's great. very important. Um, you know, to keep the festival going, I think. Yes, um, absolutely. You know, it's one of the social events, not only that promote uh, international cultures yes. and the art of cinema from different, you know, countries, but at the same time, it brings people together. It, oh, it, it's a voice yes. uh, for independent filmmakers right, uh, in right, Boston. Right. So how many submissions do you get? Like this year, how many submissions did you get? This year we get over, I mean, close, I mean, more than 2,600 submissions. Ooh. So we watch movies in the office for six months. Wow. It's a very long process. Wow. And how many got selected? We get about, this, pa uh, this past festival, we get about 96 movies and selected. Out of that, 2,000 yes. something? Yes. Oh, boy. It's very competitive. It's very competitive. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great, great. Wow, I'm sure. So um, this is really, really exciting. I mean, I have so many different questions to <laughs> ask you, but I know we're running out of time here. We're getting the signals there. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, quickly, I just want to uh, hear a little bit about your current project. I know you're working on, you just released a movie, right? Yeah, we just released Against the Job, yep. um, which is a movie about a DJ calling people with prank phone calls on the radio. Yeah. And at the same time, there's a uh, dramatic story that exploded uh, throughout the uh, the film uh, that ended up affecting his life, you know, his his, his private life, his personal life. Okay. So it's a great film. We had a great run at the AMC Lewis Theater in downtown Boston, and now we are looking to have presentation in New York and California, and also to have it available online. So we are very excited about oh, it. Oh, wonderful! The job. Yeah, wonderful. it's a great film. I have to say. It's my best film. Really? Yes. Yeah, I'm it's looking one of my best films. Great. I look forward to watching it. And we will, we will add a little glimpse of that in this, yes. uh, at the end of this video as well. So thank you so much. It was such a fun talk with you. It was yeah. getting, just getting to know you as a person. All right. It's been fantastic. So thank you for coming over. All right. Thank you, Gauri, for having me. Thank you Absolutely. also, Niraj, for doing the, uh, for being behind the scene. Yeah, we got so some we behind really the scene crew. It. Yeah, <laughs> so it's a honor. Thanks for giving me that opportunity to talk with your audience. And I'm looking forward to some other opportunities you may have. Yes, absolutely. All right.
WB7P, your boy Mad Mike in the AM. Let's give it up for that jab stab. You ready? Let's get it. Go! Hello, this is John Singleton calling. This is Don King calling. This is Assistant Principal Jesse Jackson calling. This is the last time. Can you get out now? No, no. Uh, of course I care. What do you want from me? Have it's Mike from WP7P FM. This is a jab stab. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Mike, in the AM, baby. Michael, another. Hey. Welcome to the station. It's such a pleasure meeting you, sir. You're part of the family now. I'm in love right now. Am I sick? Many people think love is a sickness because of all the crazy things it makes them do. What the heck, babe? Talking to this girl about her personal life. Who is she? Baby, I talk about people's personal problems every day on the radio. What's the problem? Now, what do you think you're doing to Samantha, man? Heck, Mike, now you're mentoring her relationship? You don't tell me about him. I'm the one that was married to him. I know I'm better than anybody in the world. You understand me, baby? I ain't playing with you. Some guy got killed talking to you on your show? I didn't hear anything about that. When my show gets suspended, what am I going to do for a job? It's Mike. Remember me? From the radio station. After you abused her the way you did, you're looking for her? All oh, this is crazy! You know it! And now, you hurt the entire family. And I just talked to your mother, and she's crying in disbelief. Is this a radio station? I want to give my brother the jazz. 